Hello and welcome to your new video. My name is Sihi and in this video I will review the Hoka Clifton 9s. If you haven't checked out my first impressions video, I highly recommend that you check that out first. Secondly, this video is not sponsored whatsoever. Ha! I wish. This means that the information provided in this video is my own experience and opinion. Let's briefly touch upon the basic specifications. The stack height in the heel is 33 millimeters, in the forefoot 27 millimeters. So that means that's the classical Hoka 5 millimeter drop. The difference between the Clifton 8 and the Clifton 9 is they added overall 3 millimeters in stack height. In my size 46, the shoe weighs 300 grams, which is already a little bit lighter than the Clifton 8. And 300 grams for a daily trainer, I don't call that bad if you ask me. For me personally, they are true to size. I didn't have any issues, not even on longer ones when you know that your feet expand a little bit. I already did around 250 kilometers in them, so they have been thoroughly tested. They have been tested in a wide range of paces and workouts, including easy ones, recovery ones, long ones, speed ones, including even all out ones, and of course, to wrap it up, strides. In my personal opinion, the shoe performs best in the easy pace category up until your longer ones. They have been tested on different kinds of terrains, including normal roads, gravel terrains, single tracks in the field, cobblestone, and yes, indeed, I even played around in the mud with them. Oh yeah, baby. The shoe has a nice little bounce in it that propels you forward. The midsole itself is also very good for those longer ones. It's not too firm, so it will put a bit less stress on your legs and feet. At first, I was also a bit concerned about the exposed midsole underneath. But looking after 250 kilometers at the state of that foam, it's still looking great. The design of the outsole is also really good. If you can see the pattern that Hoka is using here between the midsole and the outsole, that's making sure that no stones can get stuck into it. And as an extra bonus, when you are running in a muddy environment, the shoe can dig a little bit deeper into the mud to give you that extra traction. I noticed it myself on a couple of runs and it's working really, really good. Also, not a single stone got stuck into it. The shoe also has a bit of a wider base at the forefoot to give you that extra bit of stability. Hoka claims that the upper has been optimized to provide you some better breathability, but I do have to warn that there are still risks in having hot spots, especially on those warmer days. On days when the temperatures are a bit normal, then you will not have issues. It will be a very good shoe, but just be careful on those warmer days. The shoe has a very good lockdown and also inside at the heel and at the ankle, there is a good amount of padding, including in the heel tab. And the heel tap also has a second function. It will also protect your Achilles on those longer ones. The tongue itself is very thick, but it's also comfortable. The downside is, of course, that it's less breathable, meaning that you can get hot spots at the top of your foot. At the sides, towards the forefoot, the upper is a lot thinner. So the breathability in that area is way better than at the top of your foot in the tongue or at the heel area. What I can recommend to avoid any possible hot spots is make sure the socks that you are wearing are not too thick. If you want to run in this shoe in temperatures around 30 degrees, maybe more, then you really need some thinner socks. The laces are of a very good quality and as you can see the length is amazing. So if you need to do the runner snap, Hoka got you covered. They also got a little stretch in them and they don't come loose that easily. Also another bonus point. As already briefly touched upon at first, I was afraid that the durability of the exposed midsole would be a problem. But there is no problem, it's still looking very good. The outsole itself is also very durable. As I mentioned, I did around 250 kilometers and the outsole still looks great. Same counts for the upper. The upper also still in very good condition. Because of that, my estimation is that this shoe will easily reach up to 800, even 1000 kilometers, which is very, very good for a daily trainer. To wrap up, here by the summary of the Hoka Clifton 9. This shoe is advertised as a daily trainer, which will give you extra stability and a very good lockdown. I completely agree with that. The lockdown is amazing. The stability is also amazing. And the responsiveness and the overall feeling when you are out on a run 
is incredible. My recommendation is that you can use this shoe with ease for easy ones up until your longer ones. You could use it for some light speed work, but do keep in mind the possibility of having hot spots. If you like to do speed work, Perhaps a good recommendation could be the Hoka Winston 3. The Clifton has a good bounce and will easily get you from point A to point B. Don't worry about that. The shoe is also very durable and I see it reaching up to 1000 kilometers and that for a retail price of 150 euros. I also do recommend look a bit around on the internet if you're interested in buying this shoe because probably you will find stores where the shoe costs already a bit less than 150 euros. That's it for the review of the Hoka Clifton 9. If you liked the video, if you found the video informative, do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And recently, I also started developing the website goforward.one. If you have the chance, do check it out and let me know your thoughts. I thank you all for watching and I see you all in the next one. Bye.